Welcome to the WPL Book Drop Podcast. I'm your host, Becky Miller, Circulation and Marketing Assistant at Waterloo Public Library. Joining us today is Robin Keim, Director of Clue for the Waterloo Community Playhouse. Robin studied theater performance and theater for youth at UNI, and her first full-time theater gig was touring the U.S. with Poetry Alive. Oh, that's cool. What's Poetry Alive? Poetry Alive is a company that um, is based out of Asheville, North Carolina, and it's a two-person team, so they have several teams that work um, at the same time, and you, um, you have one other partner um, on your team, and you have four different shows that are created out of pieces of poetry and literature, and then you travel to different schools and communities and perform those shows for a variety of age groups. Oh, that sounds like fun. It was so much fun. It was very excellent. Awesome. Uh, Robin is also an avid fan and player of card and board games, and she loves to play cribbage. That's fun. I do. I've been playing cribbage um, for like 20 years, probably. My grandma taught me when I was really young, and I teach everybody I can awesome. to play cribbage. So. <laughs> and then Robin also works full time as the campus ministry associate at Three House Collaborative Campus Ministries, located on College Hill, across from you and I. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, Three House um, is a collaborative campus ministry, as it says in the name, and was um, founded primarily in the uh, Methodist tradition. It used to be known as the Wesley Foundation. So it's a big brick building that sits at the top of College Hill across from the president's house and has since grown um, in the last 10 to 15 years to include four other denominations. So even though 100 years ago it was founded as the Methodist tradition, um, it has since become an ecumenical and collaborative ministry between the Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Disciples of Christ, and ELCA Lutheran um, denominations. So um, different churches in the area in those traditions support Three House um, in a variety of ways and are there as adults for our adult students, right, um, as somebody in the community to see and go to with their faith questions and when they're looking for a congregation to be a part of. And then our ministry at um, UNI welcomes them to ask questions, to explore their faith and who they are called to be. Okay, cool. So what are some of the activities that you do there? We have a Wednesday night worship, and before that we have a gathering time with a home-cooked meal that's actually provided by members of different congregations in the Cedar Valley. Um, we are wrapping up what we call an interfaith coffee house, and we've had guest speakers for the last six weeks um, that um, come from the Muslim and Jewish and Christian faiths, and they have talked about um, Ramadan and Passover and Easter respectively, as uh, those three actually um, holidays are happening right at the same time this, this year. Wow. Yeah, so that's really cool. Um, we have other Bible studies that are student-led. We volunteer a lot and do what we can to care for our neighbor. Cool. Okay, well, I have to say officially welcome to the podcast, Robin. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So for our listeners that don't know, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Waterloo Community Playhouse? That's why we have you on the podcast is. today. What is the Community Playhouse? So the Waterloo Community Playhouse is um, Waterloo's community theater, and it's dedicated to entertaining and educating the community and surrounding areas in the arts. And it's been here since 1916, which is pretty cool and a very longstanding tradition. Um, we're a nonprofit organization that's funded by ticket sales and generous donations and support from like-minded community members. We produce um, around nine shows each year, and that varies from children's plays and musicals to adult theater productions. We also offer educational classes on acting, production elements, playwriting, and we have um, summer camps coming up as well. Wow, it sounds so busy. Yeah, we have really found that community theater brings people together in a unique way, and um, people get a chance to bond through this shared experience, and it helps them relate to each other, learn more about themselves and the world around them, and the community as a whole. We, we explore empathy, creativity, camaraderie, and celebrate um, different and diverse viewpoints along the way. So more information can be found online. We have a Facebook page and an Instagram, and the... Uh, website is uh, waterlooplayhouse.org, but it's W-L-O-O -O and then playhouse.org. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, so 
the reason that we have you on today is to talk about your upcoming production of Clue. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about Clue? When does the show begin? Yes. Oh, I am so excited. So for those who don't know, Clue is based on the board game and pulls a little bit of elements from the movie, but it's primarily based on the board game. And it's a very funny, very uh, dark sort of comedy um, where farce meets murder mystery, right? So we have this remote mansion where six mysterious guests assemble for an unusual dinner party and murder is on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you set that yes. up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the ensemble is led by Wadsworth, the butler, and we welcome Miss Scarlet, Professor Plum, Mrs. White, Mr. Green, Mrs. Peacock, and Colonel Mustard into the mansion. And everybody races to find the killer as the body count stacks up and they're trying to figure out who done it. So the show opens Friday, May 13th, which is also a little foreboding Ooh. if anybody <laughs> listening is superstitious, right? Um, and we run through Sunday, May 22nd. And shows on Thursday, Friday, Saturdays are at 7 p.m. and 2 o'clock matinees on Sundays. And tickets are available at that website that I mentioned, which again is wlooplayhouse.org. Or you can call us at 319-234-0367. I am so excited, Becky, about this production. The cast is amazing. Um, and this is my first time directing with the Playhouse. I've been involved for a number of years, but this is my first time in the director's seat. Um, and it's a fantastic cast of actors and a production team to work with. Um, Five of the cast members are brand new to the Waterloo stage, which is very exciting. And we've been really working hard to bring these quirky characters to life. And we've brought it into the 21st century a little bit with modernizing some of the language. And our sound designer has created a sort of cinematic feel to the music and underscoring and sound effects that the audience will hear. Um, and our costumer is also um, bringing the costuming up to speed in the 21st century and really giving those characters very unique and individual looks. Plus, our set will be its own character because it's the house, right? And there are going to be elements of the board game in the in um, pieces of the set, so it's really going to pay tribute to the original board game. And we're keeping the dark humor and adding a weight of realism to the world of the show, and I, I can't wait to welcome the audience to see the show. It sounds like so much fun. I saw a photo of the maid dressed up here at the library because we were doing like a little bit of promotion that's coming on the social media pages, so look for that. Um, and it just looks like so much fun. We're, we're probably having Having too much fun. It's going to be so excellent, and um, every everybody has been working so hard in the sh in the show and the production side of things. So we have a lot of new designers to the Playhouse as well. So that's an exciting thing too to see all of the different debuts that are happening within the Playhouse community and and the new people that are getting excited about theater. Yeah, um, can you tell us a little bit behind the scenes what it's like preparing for a show? What do you? How much training do you have to go through, or practice do you go through to get ready? Like. <laughs> What's involved? Yeah, so like I said, um, this is my first time directing with the Playhouse, but I've been an act. I was an actor first. I am an actor first. So um, I set up my rehearsals in the way that I would like them set up, kind of as an actor. But in order to do that, it's a lot of research. Um, this is pre rehearsals, right? There's a lot of research on the director's side of things to decide um, what era are we going to what decade are we going to set the play in so what does that mean for language what does that mean for props or costuming and to be able to then go to my production team and say I'd like to set it in 2018 example you know here's what we need in order to do that so then um, when we go through casting it's really looking for those individuals who are going to stand out on their own but play well with others right and and really bring that um, camaraderie to the stage and then uh, we have been in rehearsals since March 21st, and we rehearse four nights a week for about three hours. So um, you do the math there. That's a big commitment. It's a big commitment, yeah. So we're anywhere between 12 to 15 hours a week rehearsing, um, and there's flexibility with that. We have a very gracious and generous cast, so there are some nights where um, we wouldn't have rehearsal, and then we would work a little bit harder and longer the next day kind of thing. So it's been excellent. They've been working hard, and they're off script, right? So they're all memorized and running around the house trying to decide, uh, you know, what comes next in the blocking as we're, as we're practicing. Um, and when, when you see the show, it'll be totally different every night. It's never going to be the same show as different things happen or new, new things are discovered in the script, in the way things are said. Um, which is kind of the beauty of live theater, yeah. something different every night. 
nights. You could come every night. <laughs> you could come every night, and it you'd see so many different things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I was just gonna say, nobody that's doing this is like getting paid, and they're coming to do this because they love theater. I just think that's so amazing. It absolutely is. Waterloo Playhouse could not function without its dedicated volunteers and the people who love it. Um, every actor that you see on stage and the crew behind the scenes is all volunteer based, um, and so they are. Yes, they're donating their time, they're donating their talent, um, and we're very, very fortunate and very, very lucky to be working with the caliber of actors and crew that we have. Um, and we're grateful for everybody that wants to be involved and support in some kind of way. I mean, that's why we're here, is we're here for the community um, to learn and educate and grow with them. So. Absolutely. That's that's why they call it the community playhouse. Exactly. <laughs> well, we here at the Waterloo Public Library love mysteries, and you can find all sorts from the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew to Alfred Hitchcock and Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes. In fact, if you watch the Waterloo Public Library and the Waterloo Community Playhouse Facebook page, you can even see some exclusive sneak peek photos of the cast members in costume and we'll also be sharing some of our favorite mysteries so look for that soon and before we wrap up we want to uh, have you share a book or two that you've read recently sure um so i'm actually just getting started in the bridgerton series by julia quinn um and it's been really good so far i watched the series and then i thought well maybe i should read the books and i'm really enjoying the books um I also really recommend anything written by Tamara Pierce. I find that she is a fantastic author who writes with a lot of um, diversity in her characters. And um, she writes in two different fantasy worlds and her characters are complex, her writing is straightforward, and I think her world building rivals any of the greats. So I'm also uh, kind of a comic book fan, so I just acquired the entire collection of the He-Man Masters of the Universe miniseries, oh mini comic series. It's incredible That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah so I have been loving uh, revisiting all of those stories as well so I like that's like a takes you back nostalgia <laughs> it sure does yes absolutely and with all of the remakes and reboots that are happening it's it's been so much fun to read those stories again and see where um, the current creators of that universe are pulling from so very cool well Robin thank you so much for joining us today on the WPL book drop podcast it's really been a pleasure thanks for having me it's been a delight if you liked today's episode, be sure to leave a rating and subscribe. Thank you.